Hey there everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing with you my top 10 favorite outdoor DIY projects to help you spruce up your outdoor area for summer. If you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications. All right, let's get into it. I started off with 14 two by four by eights. I have my saw, the Craig jig, which I did not end up using because I made one cut differently than the plans and to fit my needs. And then I used two and a half inch exterior screws to put everything together. I started my cuts here. I did eight cuts at 72 inches, one cut at 79 inches, 13 cuts at 25 and a half inches, and two cuts at 28 and a half inches. All right, now that all my cuts were done, I took two of the 72 inch boards and I attached five of the 25 and a half inch boards to make a frame for the support. Next, I worked on putting the legs together. I made two sets of these for each side. I used four 25 and a half inch boards for this and then also one 28 and a half inch board for one set of legs. After that, I just attached the legs on each side with the exterior screws. Next, it was time to attach the seat slats to the support frame. I used six of the 72 inch cut wood and I just attached those to the support with the exterior screws. The last step in building the couch was to attach the back support to the arm pieces. The next day, I went ahead and sanded the whole piece down really good so that way I could apply the stain. The stain that I used was Min Wax in the Dark Walnut and I applied one coat all over and I'm going to let that dry for about 24 to 48 hours and then I'm going to do a polyurethane on top of this to protect it from the weather and the rain that it will be getting. And guys, I will link the plans to this DIY couch down in the description box below. So make sure you take a look at that if you're interested in building your own outdoor couch. It was actually really easy. It only took me a couple hours to build it and a couple hours to stain it. So not bad for a day's work. Alright guys, so I needed my cushions to be budget friendly and cost effective so I started looking online and anything that I found for already made outdoor seat cushions that I wanted were uh, going to be at least $120 for three sets of cushions and back cushions for my couch. And I was really trying to lower that cost and make it about half of that. So I have spent probably about $70 to $80 for all the supplies that I need for these cushions. So that makes my total for my couch and for the cushions to be roughly around $150. So I thought that was a lot better because I didn't want to make something that I could have just went out and purchased from the store, already made, already put together for two, three hundred dollars. And I wanted it to be something that was really budget friendly and cost effective. So this is what I came up with for the outdoor cushion. All right, so for the supplies, I chose these 28 by 28 Euro pillows. 
and I have sprayed them with the Rust-Oleum's Never Wet. I already had two of them in my closet, so I actually only had to purchase one of them. So I did get this off of Amazon. It was, I believe it was $16 or $17 for just this one pillow. Now that wouldn't have been cost effective if I would have needed three of them. So I did look on Walmart.com and they have Euro pillows, 26 by 26 Euro pillows for seven or eight dollars a piece. So if I needed all three of them, that still would have been cost effective for me to get three pillows rather than buying already made outdoor cushions. So that's for the back pillows. To cover them, I am going to use this drop cloth here, which I got from Amazon. And this, I believe, is a six by nine foot, and it was about nine dollars. And I got two of them: one to make the top, the back pillows, and one to make the bottom cushion. And then to fuse all of this together, I got E6000 Fabrifuse, and I've never used it before, but it's supposed to be pretty strong, and hopefully, it will be strong enough to use this together to make some pillowcases basically. Um, I also have this unique stitch which I just found in the drawer in case I didn't have enough E6000. And then I also have this stitch witchery which is just uh, fusible tape um, that you do with the iron and that will be, I'll use that for my um, hemming and then I will glue everything together. Then I have my scissors and my rulers and my cutter and that is it so I am ready to get started so I started off by cutting six pieces of the drop cloth at 30 inches by 30 inches and I did that so that I would have a couple inch overhang so that I could hem the seams together with the E6000 glue and that is what I'm doing here I'm folding one piece of fabric up and then I have another piece of fabric underneath that I am using the E6000 on and then I'm just folding it back together and I took pins to hold it in place after it was glued down because the E6000 takes about eight hours for it to completely dry and then I did that to all three sides of the pillowcase and I left one side open and then I also did that to each pillowcase and I had three pillowcases in total. All right guys, so now I'm ready to cover the seat and for the seat I bought convoluted bed pads <laughs> and they are 33 inches by 76 inches by I believe two inches, two inches thick. So I bought two of these to stack on top of each other so that I will have four inch thick cushions. Now the length is perfect. My couch is 72 inches, so that's perfect. The width though is about 29 inches, so I'm going to need to cut a few inches off of the width on each of these to make them 29 inches. So for my seat cushions, I started off by trimming both the mattress pads to 29 inches in width with my scissors and then I used my drop cloth which was 6x9 which fit perfectly for both these mattress pads and I just folded the drop cloth over top of it and then I started using my hem tape and my iron and I folded up the drop cloth and started hemming it to the mattress pad. Now this is an unconventional method, so you wanna make sure that you do not burn yourself, you're being careful with the iron, and also you are not burning through the mattress pad or the cloth. But it did work out and it fused the two pieces together really well. This is the side here, which was a little bit more difficult to work with. It was just a lot of folding and unfolding and cutting some pieces off. But I tried to just kind of wrap it like a present and then use the hem tape to fold it up and fuse it together.
the last side, the long side, was the easiest to fuse together. I just used the hem tape in my iron and I fused the drop cloth to the mattress pad. So the next day after the glue was dry, I took the pins out and flipped the pillowcases right side in. And then I took my hem tape and I hemmed the opening so that way I would have clean edges. And I put my pillow inside the pillowcase. And then I just fused the two pieces of drop cloth together so that way my pillow would be held inside the pillowcase. All right, to start out, I'm gonna mix my concrete. And I just have a bag of concrete here. I'm not gonna use the whole thing, I'm just gonna use a little bit because my bowl isn't that big. And then I have a bucket to mix it in, something to stir it in, and water. That's all I have to do to mix it up. concrete mixed I have two plastic bowls here and I'm just going to coat the inside of one with some cooking spray and the bottom of another one with the cooking spray okay now that the bowls are coated with the cooking spray I'm going to pour the concrete in the one with the cooking spray on the inside and fill that up All right, now that the concrete is inside this bowl, I'm gonna take the bowl with the cooking spray on the outside and I'm gonna press it down into the concrete to make my hole. All right, now that I have my bowl in place, I'm just gonna take some cans that I had around the house and place them on the inside to hold this. I'm gonna wait 24 to 48 hours. All right guys, I have let this concrete sit for about 48 hours now. <laughs> um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take it out of this bowl and it should just pop off super easy since we put the cooking spray on it. So here we go. All right, that came out really easy, which is great. So now what I'm going to do, and you could sand these edges if you guys wanted to, so just take a piece of sandpaper and kind of go around. I like the way it looks with a little roughness to it, so I'm gonna leave it. But now what I'm gonna do is, I have my sterno here. My sterno's just gonna set right inside. And then I'm just going to take this chicken wire and I'm going to cut it to fit inside on top of this. And then I'm going to take these lava rocks here and I'm going to put those on top of the wire so you won't see that wire and it'll look kind of cool that way. 
So let's find out how this looks. All right guys, so this is the drop cloth that I am using for my outdoor rug. It is six by nine and it has a double stitch edging, which is good. So what I'm gonna do before I start stenciling on this, I'm going to give it a good wash. The company who made this sent me instructions on how to wash it so that you don't shrink it and also how to double wash it if you needed to, um, to give it a softer fabric. So I am just going to wash it once and it says to do that in cold water and then hang it up to dry. So it's a really nice day outside so I'm just going to let it dry outside and then I'll come back and show you how I stencil it. Alright guys, so I am back today. <laughs> Yesterday was a bust. Um, I, after I washed the drop cloth, I ended up half having to hang it up inside because it started pouring down the rain and it was just thunder and lightning and it was just awful outside so it took a little bit longer for it to dry than expected because it was inside but that's okay so now it's dry it's all ready to be stenciled um, one thing I did forget to tell you is after you wash it you want to use an iron on the damp cloth to get all the wrinkles out and then hang it up to dry so I did that it is all ready to go now I have my stencil here this is what I'm using. It's from Americana Decor Deco Art. And then I have my stencil brushes. And then I have some chalk paint. And I got all of these plus the drop cloth off of Amazon like I told you yesterday. So I will leave a link down in the description box below so you guys can check everything out if you want to. And I'm just going to get started stenciling. I have no pattern or anything, so I'm probably just going to start in the middle and work my way out and hopefully everything works out. So let's get started. All right, so I started in the middle and worked my way outward with the stencil and guys, it just kind of worked out. Once I started figuring out what the pattern was going to be, I just went with it. Again, I did not measure anything. It was not perfect, but I think it turned out really great in the end, and it's exactly what I wanted. guys so I have my concrete mixed up here and if you guys have seen my DIY fire bowl video this is the same concrete I used I just used the other three quarters of a bag and I mixed it with water until it was this uh, cake like batter consistency and now I'm going to use that to fill my containers all right so for my molds I have here these three containers from the Dollar Tree and this is going to be my base. I'm going to fill all three containers and I'm going to fill them right here to the rim and then for the top I'm going to use this platter that I got from the Dollar Tree also. And then before I fill my containers with the concrete I'm going to use this cooking spray to spray all inside of here and that way it'll make it easier to release my concrete once it's set. So let's get started. All 
right, so now I got my containers filled with the concrete. I just pounded these ones down to make sure that the air bubbles were out of it. And then the concrete will probably set up in about 24 to 48 hours. Now with my platter, what I'm gonna do to make the bowl shape is I have another platter that I've sprayed with the cooking spray on the bottom. And I'm just gonna press it down into the concrete to get the bowl shape. And then once I take it back up, I am going to add these little Dollar Tree gems to give it some color. And then I'll put this back on top of here after I do that and put some rocks on the top of this just until it sets up. Alright guys, so this is the moment of truth. It has been about 48 hours since I've placed the concrete into the molds, so hopefully it is all set up. I am going to use this box cutter here to cut through the plastic to take these ones out of the mold, and then this one should just flip out of the mold easily since we put the cooking spray in. So, here we go. All right, so everything is out of the mold. These ones were a little bit difficult to get out of the containers. Just took a little bit of extra work, but once the containers were cut open, they just slid right out, so it wasn't that bad. And then this one was easy to get out, but unfortunately, I have a little crack here in the lip, but um, that's okay. That's what happens with DIY, so I will just work around it. I am probably going to take um, a piece of sandpaper and go around and sand a little bit of the edges and clean up the glass pieces so you can see those a little bit better and then it'll be time to put it together. Alright guys, so before I put this bird back together I need to seal the concrete and I've decided to only use two of these cylinders here for my bird bath. The third one just makes it too tall and awkward. So I'm just going to use two of these and then I have my base here and I'm going to coat it in this clear seal concrete protective sealer which will water waterproof it. It's for indoor and exterior use and that will help protect it from the rain and the water and everything that it will get this summer. Alright guys, so I am going to get started putting all of this stuff together here in a minute. I just wanted to show you what I'm going to do to cover up this chipped area on my bowl here. I found this spitter in my garage and I have never used it. I had, I've had it for a long time. So I'm going to use that to cover up this area and I'm actually going to hook it up to a pump so it will work. And then this is an oil pan that I found in my garage and it's never been used either. So I cleaned it out and that's what's going to hold my pump. I'm going to dig a hole in the ground and put this inside and then put the pump inside and that will be where the water comes from for the spitter. So I'm going to get started putting everything together and digging my hole.
All right, so I'm starting out with this shelf that I got about eight years ago at Michael's for $5. It just came with one by twos and some screws. I had to put it all together. Um, so I think you could easily replicate this just by going to Home Depot and buying some one by twos or one by three furring strips. They're really cheap and you could build it yourself. Next, I'm going to be using these cedar fence boards. They're six foot long, and I had these left over from my faux shiplap fireplace that I did. I have six full ones left over that I'm going to be using. Also, I'm going to be using two of these one by threes that I had in my garage just to modify the shelf a little bit. The first thing I'm going to do is modify this shelf and I'm going to do that by measuring in between the two legs for each shelf. Then I'm going to take those white one by threes and I'm going to use those measurements and cut them down to size. Then I am going to place the one by three in between the first shelf in the legs and then I'm going to go ahead and use my nail gun with two inch nails and nail them into the shelf. And I did that the same way for the bottom shelf as well. This is just gonna make it easier for when I place the cedar fence boards on top here like this, so that way the boards are level with the shelves. So that's all I'm doing here is I'm placing the six cedar fence boards out and making sure they all line up at the bottom. And then I'm just going in and using my two inch nails in my nail gun and nailing them down to each shelf. Now the basic construction of this potting bench is complete. This is how it looks after it's all put together. I did want to go ahead and add a shelf to the top there where the cedar boards are. So I had a leftover piece of fence that was already partially cut. So I just measured it the size of the shelf that I needed. And then I went ahead and cut that down. Now I'm just going to go ahead and give everything a fresh coat of white linen chalk paint. And then I did come back with some polyurethane and go over everything to protect it. I also went ahead and spray painted some L brackets, the screws for the L brackets, and some hooks that I already had out in my garage with some hammered black spray paint. And then after everything was all dry, I came back and installed those L brackets onto the cedar fence boards. And then I just installed my shelf on top of those. Then I did come back with my nail gun and some two inch nails in my nail gun. And I just nailed the cedar boards to the back of the shelf so that way they wouldn't wiggle around or anything. And now I'm just taking the hooks that I had painted and I'm installing those to the bottom here of the bench. After the hardware and the shelf were all installed on the piece, it was pretty much complete and it was time to be decorated. So I had a piece of leftover cedar board from where I had cut the shelf and it was perfect size to make a sign out of. So I wanted to go ahead and show you how I did that. Um, I just went ahead and took some white linen chalk paint and lightly brushed it on both sides of the sign just to give it kind of a weathered look look and on one side of the sign I freehanded the word flowers and then I flipped the sign over so that it could be a reversible sign and on the other side I wrote the bar and I just freehanded both of these with my sharpie paint pen um, and then I came back and filled in some of the lines to make them a little bit thicker to make it stand out a little bit more and I think this sign is perfect for the potting bench and for a bar cart so I can use it um, as both and all I have to do is flip the sign around and change some things around so I absolutely love how this turned out I cannot wait to have people over to entertain to use it as a bar cart and um, have drinks on and then when I'm not entertaining and it's just sitting out I can use it as a potting bench and I can plant my plants on and use it to um, hold flowers and things like that. So what you will need for this project is a rope rug and I made this. Um, you probably have seen tutorials 
on Pinterest or on YouTube on how to make a rope rug. I will link down below on the tutorial that I use to make mine. So I thought this would be a great idea to paint this rug like a watermelon. So I have my rug here. I have some green paint, some red paint, and some black and white acrylic paint. And then I have some paint brushes or foam paint brushes, and then some painter's tape just in case I need to tape off where I want to paint at. But let's go ahead and get started. Now I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to paint the black seeds on it. So I'll be back. Alright, so I'm back and now I'm going to attempt to paint some seeds on to the red part of this rug. All right, so I really love how this watermelon rope rug turned out. I have it in front of my sink in the kitchen right now. I could spray it with some protective spray maybe later on to uh, put it outside if I want to. But for now, I'm going to leave it here in my kitchen and it's going to brighten it up. But I'm going to show you now how I'm going to plant these in the hanging pots. I'm going to use this miracle Grow garden soil, vegetables, and herbs um, to pot them with. So here we go. Alright, so I'm going to plant the strawberries in these hanging baskets, which I got from the Dollar Tree. They came with the metal um, basket and the coconut liner for just a dollar. And actually what I'm going to do is make a sphere out of them and try planting the strawberry plants between these little things here and all over. And I've seen this done with like flowers, wave petunias, and succulents. Um, so I don't know how it's going to work out with the strawberry plants. but. We will see and hopefully it'll work out good. Um, I think it'll look really cute on my patio. So I'm just going to get started by taking one of these chains off of each one and then I'm going to fill them with soil.
now that I'm done filling the baskets with dirt, I'm going to attempt to flip this over, this one that doesn't have a hook on it, onto one that does have a hook on it. Now I've seen where people have used like a board in between. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to flip it over. I might lose a little bit of dirt, but I think it'll be okay. Here we go. Alright, that wasn't too bad. So now that it's flipped over here, I'm just going to take these zip ties and go around and secure it, the top basket to the bottom basket. it through the hole into the dirt and I'm just going to do that all around the bottom and the top of the spears on both of them. I'm gonna make a little fire bowl with these tiki torch canisters. I just removed the canisters from the tiki torches and now I'm just gonna remove the wicks from the canisters and set those aside to use them later. Next I'm gonna paint all three canisters with some black spray paint um, and then once those are dry I am going to use one of these tins from Dollar Tree and fill it up with three bags of this sand that comes from Dollar Tree as well. Next, all I did was replace the wicks back inside the lids to the canisters and place the lids back on the canisters. Once that was complete, I just took the canisters and nestled them inside the sand. And then I used some of this river rock from Dollar Tree. I used two bags and placed that around the canisters inside the tin. And that was it. I just added some tiki torch of fluid to each one of the canisters and lit them up. And I had a cute little fire bowl. With you looking for a bar in the nearest town. I've never seen a sky so blue. And you take me high. Ain't nobody like you. I'm gonna be making a lighted 
garden turtle statue. Um, I thought that these oval shaped baskets looked like turtle shells. So I'm gonna be using three of these baskets, one for the turtle shell, and then I'm taking this other one here and cutting it up. Um, I'm just taking the rim off the top and off the bottom of the basket. So I'm just left with the um, wire mesh material. And I just cut that in half. It's pretty easy to cut with scissors, but you could use wire cutters. So now I'm gonna take that piece and measure it on top of the basket and just cut off um, the size that I need. And then I'm gonna hot glue that piece to the top rim of the basket and cut the excess wire around the rim so that way it's even. And then with the other piece, it was just enough to place over the other side of the basket and hot glued it down as well and then cut the excess wire off. Now there is a little um, opening in the middle of the basket still but that's okay because this is gonna be the bottom of the turtle and it actually worked out in the end because I had to change up the lighting um, so that little opening doesn't matter now for the turtle's feet, I'm gonna use four of the smallest clay pots that Dollar Tree sells. And I am just gonna place those upside down and glue the bottom of those pots to what used to be the top of my basket um, that I covered. So uh, it was a little difficult to glue that wire down um, to the basket. So I just used a little wooden dowel to stick through the wire and push it down onto the bottom of the clay pot so that way the hot glue would stick and it worked out well. With the last basket, I used that to shape the head and tail of my turtle. So I just cut a piece of that wire mesh and then I kind of just rolled a piece of it up and made it look like the head and neck of a turtle as much as I could. I actually ended up changing this one in the end um, off camera because I didn't like the way it was shaped when everything was put together. Um, but I attached it the same way. I just pulled the wires of the opening of the neck of the turtle through the shell of the basket and then I did use some hot glue to secure that neck to the shell of the basket and then for the tail I just rolled up a piece and kind of flattened it out and um, pushed each side to a point and then hot glued one of those points inside the basket on the back there and it is finally starting to look like a turtle next thing I did was take some white spray paint and I just gave it um, two coats of white spray paint. Now that the white paint is all dry, I am going to hot glue some of these glass gems from Dollar Tree all over the turtle shell to make it stand out. So I just started at the bottom of the turtle shell and worked my way around all the way up to the top. Um, and the hot glue actually secured them down really well. They didn't fall off or anything like that. And I'm sorry I can't tell you how many bags that I used of these because these were all left over from projects last year. If I had to guess, it was probably three bags or two and a half bags something like that but three to be on the safe side now for the top of the turtle I was going to cut a hole and put a solar light in the top of the turtle so the solar part would stick out and the light would be at the bottom and the inside of the shell um, so that that way it would light up but that didn't work out because Dollar Tree my Dollar Tree didn't have any solar lights so I'm gonna do something different so I just ended up hot gluing some more gems on the top to cover it all up. Next, I'm gonna use this white all-purpose caulking from Dollar Tree. It comes in these little tubes. All you have to do is cut the tip off and it squirts out just like icing. And it's so easy to fill in the gaps in between the gems with it. I just squirted it out in between the gems and then I used my finger to kind of spread it out and um, make sure it was even. Um, and then I also wiped it away from the gems if it got onto the gem. It was really easy to wipe off. Um, I ended up using two bottles of this caulking to do the whole turtle and it looks like it's grouted. I gave the caulking 24 hours to dry completely and this is how it looked. It turned out really nice, um, but I just 
thought it was missing something. So my son actually gave me the idea to give it some eyes with these green glass gems. And I thought that was perfect because I think it really made the turtle come alive. So I just hot glued two of the gems to the top sides of the head. And I think it worked out really well. It did actually make the turtle really come alive. Then the last thing I did was add my lighting. And you can see here where my little hole in the center actually works out perfect because I'm gonna feed some of these fairy lights into the inside and make it light up. Oh,